Hi, welcome back. Welcome to Visual Projects. Uh, in this uh, session, we're going to talk about starting your project. Now, isn't this very exciting? Um, you know, of, of it's, it's going to be an exciting part of our journey on how we take up projects. And if you've listened to all our previous lessons, we talked about the importance of experiential learning. We talked about how uh, we need to pick up or learn job skills. You talked about uh, building um, uh, you know, management skills, critical skills, as well as uh, the technical skills. Uh, we also looked at the different kinds of uh, project types. Um, and more, most importantly, we also talked about the hypothesis. So that's a quick summary of um, uh, you know, some of the critical aspects of the various lessons. And uh, now this is really exciting for me to be starting this lesson on starting a new project. Now, any project, um, uh, you know, there's a reason why we all do, right? Uh, the biggest reason being, uh, you know, that's the expectation the, uh, the university has for them to issue the graduation certificate. Uh, you know, every student is expected to go through a successful project and submit uh, their project or the research thesis um, in terms of the final results on how they have completed the project, right? And of course, they're going to be awarding marks. And each, there, there are different parameters. Um, there are, uh, uh, it's, a, it's a summative process, right? There could be multiple mini projects and a major project. And there are marks for each of these. And for also your final project, in terms of how we have gone through uh, using some of the project uh, uh, techniques, tools, uh, how we have brought together multiple, uh, you know, very individuals from different uh, backgrounds, and uh, what sort of uh, techniques or project types have you used to establish the hypothesis that you have for the problem. So all this is going to be, uh, uh, you know, carrying substantial marks. Um, and if you have used all the elements that we have seen so far, uh, you know, it's going to help you secure 100%, uh, uh, you know, if not 100%, whatever is the maximum that is possible. Uh, now, coming to the project, uh, you know, before you start your project or your, your journey as a student uh, to, to do a live project, it's always good uh, that uh, you know you answer some of these questions that we want to see. You know, if, if not all the questions, uh, so we at Vija would would request you to to please go through these questions and try to put them to use, right? Um, because uh, the the whole idea behind experiential learning is to pick up job skills in the area of interest that you have, right? All the theoretical knowledge that you have around a specific domain, um, it is important that you pick up uh, practical skills around that domain, and it's this project that's gonna help. So uh, it's important for you to decide first on what area that you would like to work on a project, right? Uh, you know, of course, this is gonna differ based on a science student or a medical student or a law student or an information technology student, uh, but the domain you belong to, uh, what aspect of the domain uh, would you like for an IT student? I mean, do you want to do a Java project? Do you want to work on artificial intelligence? Uh, you want to work on a blockchain, right? So it's, it's good to understand the emerging trends which are out there in the market. It's good to understand what your interests are. Uh, next, uh, once uh, you know uh, you get a few ideas of a project. Now, what is a project here? We're talking about various opportunities, right? Uh, in terms of various problems that you can solve. So list out whatever comes to your mind, and then try to identify how that relates to your study curriculum. And once you narrow down to fewer such options or problems that you can consider for your project. Um, you know, start writing uh, in your own words uh, what a project, uh, you what a problem statement uh, for this particular project, right? And what is the outcome that you're trying to deliver for each of that problems? Uh, it is also very important um, uh, 
uh, you know, that you're able to employ, uh, as we saw in the previous lessons about the hypothesis and how you have various types of uh, data to establish the hypothesis. So uh, the problems that you pick, and it should be concerning with the domain that you're working on, and you should also be able to validate the hypothesis, right? Uh, so it's important that you know you pick such a topic. Now moving on to point six, uh, you know you should also have an outcome for yourself, right? Yes, there's going to be an outcome for the project that's going to benefit somebody. But what are the outcomes that you are interested in getting? What are your development needs? Talk to your professor, talk to your parents, talk to your friends, talk to any other industry peers that you know. Of. I mean, uh, any context in industry, uh, and just do some self-reflection. Right? So very, you try and list out a few things that you would also like to learn through this engagement. Right? And uh, finally, you know, there's that next job, the big job that you would like to get into. So try to get some market facts around what are the skills that are expected for someone to shine and do well in that particular job. So collectively, all these points uh, you know, should help you narrow down and pick that one or two problem statements, which would help you run through this process and not just simply run through this process because uh, you know that's what you need to get a degree, but also helps you build all the job skills uh, that are needed so that you can land uh, onto a successful job. We now move to the next topic uh, again, uh, the summer self-reflection, uh, and here, you know, we'd like to facilitate this project uh, selection process. Um, you know, we all inherently, you know, tend to pick or make some choices based on our core personality, right? Now, sometimes as a personality or as a persona, you have maybe all the skills that are needed to go be successful in how you execute that project. You could already be very successful in the academia. Uh, 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 and yes, I'm very sure you can also be very successful in your job with all the skills that you possess, right? Now, we also talked of zooming in and zooming out in one of the lessons. So uh, when you do a self-reflection, you're zooming in and you're zooming in on yourself in terms of what you're your skills are, what your personality is, what your interests are, and so on. Um, it is also good to zoom out uh, because end of the day, you're going to be working for somebody. You know, end of the day, even if you're going to be a businessman, you are going to be providing goods or services to a customer who's going to buy. So we should always zoom out and try to understand what are the needs in terms of skills that the market is also expecting. What are some of the problems out there in the market and what skills are needed, especially in your areas of interest, to go solve that problems, right? So here we have a simple test, which is going to come in the next slide, which would be the type of uh, those uh, problems. Uh, I hope uh, you're looking at uh, the slide, uh, you know, with four boxes uh, with nice bright colors there. Uh, there's red, yellow, green, and uh, blue. Uh, the idea here is, uh, you know, we'd like to pick uh, your personality type or personality color. And in the next page, we have a table that's going to help you pick what that project is going to be. So I hope uh, you already picked your choice of color based on not just the color, but based on the details that were mentioned inside that box, right? So. Um, uh, you know, if you if you look at this table, you have the project types and the personality colors. So if you had a blue, your choice could be something which would use a literature. Now, what are these project types? Uh, just a quick recap of what we saw in one of our lessons. Uh, it is these types which will help you validate your hypothesis, right? Uh, and we said uh, uh, literature can be picked by somebody uh, who's a law student and who wants to refer to all the historical cases uh, so that he can provide, uh, you know, he can work on a project with that as the reference. So you have meta-analysis. So if you still have some questions around what a meta-analysis is or a questionnaire, uh, when this will be used, uh, I would like to request you to go and refer 
uh, uh, you know, at the previous lessons. Uh, but otherwise, uh, these are the colors and these are the type of project types that you can choose. Now, uh, the next slide, uh, you know, we talk about the whole aspiration piece, right? Yes, we have our inherent personality, we have our own choices, and, um, and there is a critical factor, which is for you to graduate, you need to complete a particular project, right? But I also mentioned about zooming out and really understanding what uh, lessons that we need to, uh, I mean, not lessons, but what are those other skills that we may require if we have to solve that big problem for a customer, right? So um, we do have to self-reflect for a moment to understand if we simply pick a project which just meets our personality, is that enough for us to grow and flourish and do well in, in an area of our choice, in, the, in, in your area of domain? For instance, you're in medicine and your personality is a very peaceful personality where you don't like to cut or dissect. Now, yes, but you want to become a doctor. You don't have a choice but to get into the laboratory and do a test. Right? So that requires stretch. Now stretch is one of the skills that we saw in one of our lessons earlier. So stretching is important. So though in the previous slide we have highlighted colors, we facilitated the process in terms of helping you pick one of your projects, but you may also want to do some self-introspection, the domain that you work for or the domain that you, you, you are currently pursuing in your academia, talk to your professors, uh, talk to folks in the industry, understand what are those other skills that are required. Now, if you have all those skills, nothing like that, I think you're gonna rock, you're gonna do well in your project. If you don't have those skills, you may wanna stretch, you may wanna understand what those are and try and pick a project even though it's not matching your personality so that you can also grow. Right Now, uh, by this time, you should have uh, uh, you know, narrow down to one or say two project ideas, um, which, uh, uh, you know, meet your personality, which also will help you build all the other skills that you may not possess today, um, which also deepen your skills around the domain that you're working in. Um, it will help you build the management skills, the technical skills, and the critical skills that we had talked of that all of us should possess uh, to be successful in our jobs. So, uh, you, know, uh, uh, you know, with all those criteria in mind, uh, you should have a project idea. Now, sometimes, or if you have more than one project idea, or even uh, one project idea, uh, it is good to get some quick feedback on the project and its viability. Right? How long is it going to take? It could be a great idea, but it might require a lot of resources. Now, what I mean by that is maybe it is very uh, intense in terms of capital or fund requirement. Maybe it's a project wherein you need to enroll, uh, say, 100 volunteers for you to get all the data. Um, so in, in, in those instances, um, you know, your academic schedules in terms of the project completion dates from university may not permit you to embark on a journey to take up a complex project, right? So it's important to get feedback on the viability and just the nature of the problem that you have picked. Um, uh, you know, maybe complex, uh, wherein uh, you know, you're not gonna be able to solve it real fast. So take a project idea, uh, get the feedback, uh, define, uh, you know, understand the viability, and if it is viable, well, good, you're, you're, you're ready to go. If not, it's good to quickly refine the idea and maybe, you know, de-scope some aspects of the problem and narrow down to something which will still help you accomplish, if not all, most of the skills that you want to do. And you may want to do it, um, uh, you know, as many times as uh, you can so that you're able to get to that uh, right problem. Of course, this kind, this cannot be an infinite loop 
uh, you got to you got to come to uh, you know if you are if you are not able to do it yourself, it is always a good idea to get back to your mentor or your guide and and seek their advice. Right. Finally, some helpful tips. Uh, uh, you know, during the year, uh, you know, it's always good. Um, uh, you know, when you have still time to start your project, some notes about you know what you like and what you dislike. Um, and all the research papers, you know, that you can find online that are available for you to read and use. Use your use your library. Uh, good, make good use of all the contacts that uh, you know you have in the industry. If not, please make some contacts. Uh, talk to your professors. Talk to your seniors in terms of their experience and and also what are the success factors uh, for your seniors. Um, and again, um, uh, you know, especially if you're doing any project around social welfare or social work, uh, it's good to be uh, well aware of what's going on, uh, you know, about, uh, about, about uh, in the, the news about the problem or the area that you're going to pick. Uh, be fully aware in terms of the recent developments, especially someone who's working on uh, technology. Um, um, or, or the emerging trends and technology in, in IT industry. Uh, be aware of all the recent developments. Um, and uh, uh, it's always uh, good to pick your, your seniors or your professor's brain and their experience in terms of knowing what they've gone through in this journey. You know, what are some of the common mistakes that people have made in the past? What are some of the uh, uh, good uh, best practices that they have followed, which help them to be successful? Right now, finally, choose a problem that you feel is worth solving. Of course, within the uh, limitations of time that you have.